Welcome to our service for this 28th of June. Both of our churches celebrate their patronal festival today, and so we are celebrating the feast of St. Peter and St. Paul, but particularly remembering St. Peter. Welcome in the name of Christ. God's grace, mercy, and peace be with you. You are built on the foundation of the apostles and prophets, with Christ Jesus himself as the cornerstone. God of our days and years, we set this time apart for you. Form us in the likeness of Christ, so that our lives may glorify you. Amen. Alleluia, Alleluia. Alleluia, Alleluia. Father, we praise you as Lord. All the earth gives you worship, for your majesty fills the heavens, fills the earth. Alleluia, 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 Alleluia. Blessed apostles sing praise, prophets and martyrs give glory. For your majesty praise the Spirit, praise the Son. Alleluia, 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 Alleluia. You are the Christ everlasting, born for us all of a virgin. You have conquered death, opened heaven to all believers. Alleluia, 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 Alleluia. Help those you save by your blood. Raise them to life with your martyrs. Save your people, Lord, as their ruler raise them up. Alleluia, 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 Alleluia. The reading is from the Acts of the Apostles. Chapter 12, verses 1 to 11. The first part concerns James, who is killed, and Peter, who is imprisoned. About that time, Herod the king laid violent hands on some who belonged to the church. He killed James, the brother of John, with the sword. And when he saw that it pleased the Jews, he proceeded to arrest Peter also. This was during the days of unleavened bread. And when he had seized him, he put him into prison, delivering him over to four squads of soldiers to guard him, intending that after the Passover to bring him out to the people. So Peter was kept in prison, but earnest prayer from him was made to God by the church. The second part concerns the rescue of Peter. Now when Herod was about to bring him out, on that very night, Peter was sleeping between two soldiers bound with two chains, and sentries before the door were guarding the prison. And behold, an angel of the Lord stood next to him, and a light shone in the cell. He struck Peter on the side and woke him, saying, Get up quickly. And the chains fell off his hands. And the angel said to him, Dress yourself and put on your sandals. And he did so. And he said to him, Wrap your cloak around and follow me. And he went out and followed him. He did not know what was being done by the angel was real, but thought he was seeing a vision. When they had passed the first and second guard, they came to an iron gate leading into the city. It opened for them of its own accord, and they went out and went along one street, and immediately the angel left him. When Peter came to himself, he said, Now I am sure that the Lord has sent his angel and rescued me from the hand of Herod and from all that the Jewish people were expecting. This is the end of the reading. Show your goodness, O Lord, to those who are good and to those who are true of heart. Those who trust in the Lord are like Mount Zion, which cannot be moved, but stands forever. Show your goodness, O Lord, to those who are good and to those who are true of heart. The hills stand about Jerusalem, so does the Lord stand round about his people from this time forth for evermore. 
Show your goodness, O Lord, to those who are good and to those who are true of heart. The scepter of the wicked shall not hold sway over the land allotted to the just, so that the just shall not put their hands to evil. Show your goodness, O Lord, to those who are good and to those who are true of heart. Peter declares that Jesus is the Messiah. When Jesus came into the region of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, Who do people say the Son of Man is? They replied, Some say John the Baptist, others say Elijah, and still others, Jeremiah or one of the prophets. But what about you, he asked, who do you say I am? Simon Peter answered, You are the Messiah, the Son of the living God. Jesus replied, Blessed are you, Simon, son of Jonah, for this was not revealed to you by flesh and blood, but by my Father in heaven. And I tell you that you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of Hades will not overcome it. I will give you the keys to the kingdom of heaven. Whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. I love both of the readings that we've had today. Firstly, the Gospel reading, that moment when St Peter declares Jesus to be the Messiah, the Christ, to be totally the Son of God, to be divine. And also that moment when he escapes from prison almost in a trance, thinking it's a vision. Here, the leader of the church, the person who everybody else looks to, we see him move from that first tentative, you are the Messiah, to that solid leading the church and encouraging it as it goes forward. It also, that reading marks the point at which Peter needs to leave, the, from Jeru leave Jerusalem. And that means that somebody else has to take on roles of leadership, although he still is the rock on which the church is built. But going to the gospel reading, that moment when Jesus asks that question, you, but you, who do you say I am? Everybody finds it very easy to say who everyone else thinks that Jesus is. Some people say you're this, some people say you're that. But it is Peter who decides to jump in with both feet. You are the Messiah. You are the son of the living God. I love that gospel reading because I think it is at the heart of our faith. Because all of us in our own time have to answer that question. We can talk about who we think other people might say Jesus is. We can talk about what we might read in scriptures or what we've heard in the latest sermon or what somebody said to us in church last week or in the Bible study group. But at some point we all have to answer that question for ourselves. That question is the question that Jesus asks us today. But you, not anyone else, but you. Who do you say I am? And it is the way in which we answer that question that shows us where we are in our faith journey. Can we, like Peter, without worrying about what the consequences might be for saying it, stand up and say, you are the Messiah, the Son of the living God. That's all that's asked of us. That is the moment that faith moves into a new dimension and we truly become the disciples of Christ. Let's
encouraged by our fellowship with all the saints, let us make our prayers to the Father through our Lord Jesus Christ. Father, your Son called men and women to leave the past behind them and to follow him as his disciples in the way of the cross. Look with mercy upon those whom he has called today, marked with the cross and made his disciples within the church. We pray for all who are baptized and we pray at this Petertide for all who are ordained and all who should have been ordained this weekend, remembering especially Debbie, our curate. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Your son told his disciples not to be afraid and at Easter breathed on them his gift of peace. Look with mercy upon the world into which he sent them out and give it that peace for which it longs. Give courage and strength to its leaders and to all who make difficult decisions in these extraordinary times. Give them peace. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Your Son formed around him a company who were no longer servants but friends. And he called all those who obeyed him his brother and sister and mother. Look with mercy upon our families and our friends and upon the communities in which we share. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Your Son sent out disciples to preach and heal the sick. Look with mercy on all who yearn to hear the good news of salvation and renew among your people the gifts of healing. We pray for all who are sick and all who in whatever way are involved in the ministry of healing, in hospitals, in the community and at home. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Your Son promised to those who followed him that they would sit on thrones judging the twelve tribes of Israel and would share the banquet of the kingdom. According to your promise, look with mercy on those who have walked with Christ in this life and now who have passed through death. We remember especially at this time John Yu and all who have died recently. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Almighty God, you have built your church upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets with Jesus Christ himself as the chief cornerstone. So join us together in spirit by their doctrine, that we may be made a holy temple acceptable to you through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Let us join all our prayers together in the words our Saviour has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory for ever and ever. Amen. God of grace, your church is built on Peter's faith. Grant that like him, we may be forgiven and restored, overcome our weaknesses and serve you without wavering, now and forever. Amen. And now, on this first day of her working with us, let us meet our new curate, Debbie, and her family. Hello, everybody. Uh, my name's Debbie, Debbie smith Wilds, and um, I'm the new curate here in Uppingham. Very happy to be here joining you. Um, in the last two weeks, we've just moved in, and I say we because uh, we are a whole family. There is also my husband, James, who is a, a barrister, 
Um, and we have two children. Uh, the first is Edward, who is 14 years old. He's looking forward very much to joining uh, UCC in September into year 10. And we have Bethany, who's eight years old. She's going to be joining Uppingham Primary School in year four. Uh, we also have a, a quite old chocolate Labrador called Holly. When the lockdown came, I, I think the thing that kept us moving forward really was the knowledge that we were coming here uh, at and to start work at the end of June, if you like. And we moved here and it's been wonderful. Uh, it's a wonderful welcome that we've had. We thank you all for um, the hamper of goodies, but also for the messages and so on that you have sent to us. As a deacon, we're called to serve in the community and um, we can't really know how best to do that until we've listened for a bit and um, watched and, you know, understood what, what's, what's needed. And uh, so that's what I'll be trying to do. Almighty God, who inspired your Apostle St. Peter to confess Jesus as Christ and the Son of the living God, build up your church upon this rock, that in unity and peace it may proclaim one truth and follow one Lord, your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. God give you grace to follow his saints in faith and hope and love. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be upon you and all whom you love this day and evermore. Amen. <laughs>